Hey guys, welcome to another OpenTK tutorial series. My name is Sil, and this tutorial series is going to aim at um, learning more of the basics of OpenTK and OpenGL, and how to use them to do 2D, 3D, and whatever other projects you want to work on. Um, so I won't be looking into how to really make a game in this tutorial, but I will be hopefully helping you a lot more on the OpenTK side and learning exactly what you have to do to do like frame buffer objects, shader uh, shaders. Um, a view, that kind of stuff. So hopefully this will help out quite a bit and you guys will enjoy this. Um, and I'll be showcasing a few different things. So without further ado, let's get started. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new project here. We've done this before. Um, if you haven't seen our, my setup thing for OpenTK, you might want to go look at that uh, in the platformer tutorial series because uh, that one was kind of nice. Um, we're going to go ahead and make a new project. We're going to do console application. I'm going to call this OpenTK Basics. Oops. Capitalization. All right, sweet. So we got a basic console application, just like, well, it exit outs because we have nothing. Um, so yeah, we have a basic console application, just a C sharp console application, and I'm actually going to showcase uh, NuGet packages. If you have uh, Visual Studio 2013, um, you you don't have to actually download OpenTK from the website. You can actually just use NuGet packages and to do that, you just right click on references here and you go manage NuGet packages and you can just search for OpenTK in the online section here. And you'll see that the open toolkit library is right there and you can go ahead and click install. And what this does is instead of referencing a, a DLL file on your system, it actually references uh, from the library of uh, NuGet packages that are, uh, that are stored um, often whoever manages all the NuGet stuff. Anyways, basically what this does, if we go and open up our project folder here, um, if we go in here, it, you can see that it made this packages.config file. Um, if we open that up, we can now see that it just has an XML file that tells it that it needs OpenTK. So instead of having to distribute OpenTK uh, whenever you want to, for example, go to another system and test out your source code or you put it on um, GitHub or whatever it is, right? Um, that person can just have the NuGet manager automatically download uh, OpenTK for them rather than having to distribute that yourself. So that's kind of nice. Um, you can also do it the same way that we did it in the OpenTK platform tutorial series. Um, but anyway, so we're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to make our game class here and we're doing it a little bit different than we did in the OpenTK platform tutorial series. We're going to go ahead and make our game class here. We'll do new class and we'll call it game. But we're not going to inherit from game window, which is the OpenTK uh, game class essentially. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to make we're going to have a, a public variable here called and it's going to be game window and this is going to be a reference to the game window. Um, we're going to go ahead and do using OpenTK at the top there so that that works and we're going to call it window um, and then in a constructor we're going to ask for a reference to the game window so we're going to do public game game window window and then we're going to set that reference to our own personal reference so this dot window equals window and that might be a bit confusing, so I can just do like a window input. This is the window input side. So we're setting this to that. So we're passing it in and setting it to that variable there. Um, and then in our game, what we would do, or sorry, in our program.cs, we're going to do a game window. And again, we got to be using OpenTK window equals new game window. And we'll make it with 800 by 600. And then we'll do game, game equals new game, and we'll pass it the window there. And then we'll do window.run. Now at the moment, they really don't have much relation. So what we want to do, um, now that we have a reference to the window here, what we want to do is we want to actually latch on to the event handlers for um, the on load, on update, and on render frame for the game window. Um, that way we can do stuff whenever the game window wants to have us, or wants to update and everything. So what we do is we do uh, window dot, and we do load plus equals, and in Visual Studios you can just uh, hit tab twice, and it will automatically add an event handler uh, properly formatted for you. Um, we can go ahead and get rid of the automatically generated exception there. Um, and so what this happens, or what happens with this is that we say um, whenever this load uh, event gets called, go ahead and call this function here, um, which is really nice because it automatically calls it for us. So we're going to go and do the same thing for the render and tab tab, and we'll also do it for the update frame. Oops. We are going to get rid of those exceptions, and I'm going to move this 
up here, and I suppose we probably actually want to do it for the on closing event as well, just so that we can uh, clean up anything that we've made in OpenGL. So we're going to go ahead and add that now. I'll, I'll, I like to put it just after the load function because it's close to where I create stuff so that I can remember to destroy it. Um, and now if we go ahead and run this, you'll see that uh, we have just a blank game window and our, our game class doesn't do anything, but these functions will be getting called. For example, if we, uh, let's go ahead and put it in here for do console dot write line and we say like update or something like that. If we write to the console every time this update frame function gets called in our game class, um, you'll see that it's getting called quite often. Um, and it's probably actually slowing it down quite a bit because it's drawing to the console because it's a little slow. Uh, I'm drawing to the console. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and get rid of that. Um, so sweet, now we have basically the same thing we had before, but the really nice thing about this is these uh, frame event args, are uh, they contain this time function, or this time variable, which is a double in seconds that represents how long um, since the last update. Um, basically, this is really helpful to make sure that your um, your objects move constant in your game um, in real time, even if your frame rate or your update uh, rate uh, is different. So, really helpful. Um, now what we want to do is actually draw stuff to the screen. So first we want to uh, make sure that we can clear it correctly and clear it to a certain color so that it looks like a regular window. So what we're going to do is we're going to do gl.clearColor. Actually, hold on here. I actually need to reference uh, OpenTK.Graphics using OpenTK.Graphics.OpenGL. Um, I just don't like typing this every single time before everything. So. You can do opentk.graphics.opengl.gl and then call stuff, but we use the gl class quite a bit, so we're going to do just gl now since we put the using statement there. And we're going to set the clear color. Um, one thing to note is that this clear color function doesn't actually clear the screen. It's simply setting the variable for what uh, what color the, the screen should clear. So if we say clear color and then we do color dot... I like, I like a certain custom color that I usually do, color dot from... Oh yeah, okay. Um, one thing I forgot to do, um, which is really helpful, is to add the system.drawing reference as well. And system.drawing is something that's packaged with Windows, so you don't need to do NuGet packages. You can just add a regular reference, search it in the assemblies tab on the left, do drawing, and it's right there. So system.drawing, and then we'll reference that at the top using system.drawing. There you go, now we got the color. Uh, variable there, so we're going to do um, color.fromargb, and we'll do 5, 5, 25. This is kind of like a dark blue color, basically. Um, and then and then this doesn't actually do anything. If we go ahead and run this, you'll see that our screen is still uh, not being updated at all. Um, the frames are not being uh, switched there. Um, anyways, so we can just leave it that. We can actually call this in the beginning of our function, too, like in the initialize function. We'd have to call it every frame. Um, let's go ahead and put it like there, right? Um, and that'll set the clear color throughout the rest of the game. Um, and then in our render frame function, what we want to do is we want to do gl, whoops, gl.clear, and it's going to ask for a color buffer mask. This is basically asking it what, or this is asking you um, what part of the frame buffer you want it to clear. So since we want it to clear the color buffer bit, we're going to do a color buffer mask to color buffer bit. Um, and these are all set up so that you can do bitwise or operations on them and do multiple in one call. A um, little bit complicated if you don't know bit bitwise operations, but basically this means that we can do an or operation, not two, uh, only one. I'm not sure what that symbol is called, but a little uh, line basically, right? Um, like a normal OR operation that you use in if statements and that kind of stuff looks like that, but a bitwise OR operation has only one. And we can do another color buffer mask, that buffer mask, and we do like the depth buffer bit, which we aren't using right now, so we don't really need to do that. But if we did that, it would color, it would uh, clear both the color buffer bit and the depth buffer bit. So pretty useful. Anyways, go ahead and clear it there. And if we go ahead and run this, you'll see that it's still not doing anything. And that's because we aren't swapping the buffers yet. Um, we're clearing one of the buffers, but that buffer is in the background. And what uh, what the game class does for us is it creates uh, multiple buffers that it can switch between. And the one that's not on the screen is the one that you're currently drawing to. I'm not sure if there's more than two, but for our purposes, it doesn't really matter. Um, basically, though, what we need to say is once we're done drawing stuff, um, we're going to do gl.flush, and then we're going to say window.swapbuffers, and it'll go ahead and swap those buffers for us and go ahead and show the one that we got done drawing and let us draw to the old one. 
Um, so what we do at the end of our render frame function here, we're going to do gl.flush, and this just makes sure that all the gl function calls are finished out. Um, not something really needed, but something that's nice to have there. And then we're going to do window, and remember we have a reference to the window up here now, since we saved that in our initialize function, or in our initializer, um, window.swapbuffers. Now if we go ahead and run it, you'll see that we got a background. Sweet. So uh, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap up this tour real fast, and we'll start on the next one here real soon. But uh, this is going to be great, guys. I hope that hopefully this will help you guys learn um, learn the 3D side and just kind of more of the basics of OpenTK. Um, I hope I can explain stuff well enough. I have haven't been using OpenTK too long, um, but I have been using it long enough that I feel like I can explain some of the um, common mistakes that I've uh, struggled through and the stuff that just is really annoying. OpenTK or OpenGL can be really finicky, and since we're using OpenGL through OpenTK, we're not like directly directly accessing um, what's happening. So we can do GL .get error, but unless you put that after every single line, you'll like a lot of times you won't know what's wrong. It'll just say, "Hey, your program's not working. Go do something about it." So it, it's it's a bit finicky, and it, it wants certain things. Um, and hopefully, I can tell you guys uh, what it wants so that you don't spend you know three or four hours trying to get rid of some random bug, um, like I've done many times now. So anyways, uh, hope to see you guys in the next tutorial, and that's it. Bye!